Hey guys. Um, in my testing room for Valhazia 5. Um, beta. In my sushi bar. I've created a sushi bar. See here. Sushi going around on the belts. It's pretty tricky, actually, this little belt instruction. Because it, um... Modifies the tags on the items as they go around and um, determines when they should be removed. The items expire. Um, hopefully these cabbage rolls will expire soon. Some of these um, kelp rolls. And we'll see it happen. Um, doing this does require command blocks though. Command computers um, to modify the tags. And... Uh, I mean, it's entirely optional. You could have it so that um, it, it detects when it backs up and and, and won't um, feed any more onto it anyway. So you could make it so that it um, only populates um, based on uh, player usage instead of the expiring by time. But um, that's up to you. When you implement this sort of thing, what you want to do with command blocks... Um, I think in this instance it's quite fine. Um, I've used it in the past and I've been quite dodgy and I'm not avoiding that now. But this this is um, this is relatively fair. Uh, we're only destroying objects um, rather than creating them. Oh, something just expired then. Go. Yeah, there they go. So they expired. And all these other things will expire too. Anyway, so let's have a look for the machinery to make it. We've got a like a little tap on tap on um, thing going here with the window so you can see it cooking. Um, pretty complicated sort of stuff here. We've got a network with all these chests and the service chest so we can find out what's going on. Um, so we can find out if there's anything waiting to be served. Or not. We've got uh, cold, uh, salmon and cod rolls. Rice. We need we need to supply ourselves with rice, so we cook rice. We've got cabbage rolls. Um, cabbage rolls. Sorry. Uh, kelp rolls and crab legs. They all require a different sort of machinery, so I've had to um, create a little um, operator computer program for each um, piece of equipment. Um, you can see the, the crafters have to be like this for the salmon and cod rolls, and they have to be like this for the cabbage rolls. Oh, kelp rolls. Kelp rolls. Um, and the really tricky thing with these crafters is that you can attach modems to them and um, use them like inventories. And in the case here, where we have three kelp going into the same, um, that one those that one crafter can be accessed in the three different slots. Uh, otherwise, with the the sectioned off, yeah, you do it. The back. Oh, you can't see it, but when you section the crafters off at the back, um, you're creating the slots for them. Um, so they only have one slot for each of these ones, but there will be three slots for those. Uh, so you only need one modem to control all those three. Um, the programs are much the same. They check to see if there's something there and then um, um, determine by random chance if, if they want to make something and um, check the stock levels of their supply chests to make sure that they can do it. And I've used this trick with the cobblestone to make sure the supply is always exactly as I expect. Um, and then they they um, populate this equipment with the items to craft or, or cook. Very simple. Um, the... Um, yeah, so let's have a look. We'll have a look at the rolls. Uh, 
Um, so we need to talk about our crafter. We need to talk about our service chest. We need to talk about our supply chest. Um, this is where we're making the roll. We put the items into the crafter based on whether or not we have the items in our supply. Um, like to set up, we connect our peripherals for supply and service because we're going to be pushing for and controlling items there or listing items there. Um, so if there's the service is empty, check a random chance to make sure we want to make one. Um, and in this case, we have a type. We're making two different ones, so determine what type, and then make the roll and sleep for thirty seconds. It's that easy. That easy. Set it back to running. And um, they're all much the same. Um, the rice is a little different because he cooks all the time. He's just based on whether or not we've got um, stuff to go. Uh, in this case, we're controlling it with the number of bowls in our system. Um, so it doesn't too go too crazy. Oh, we're crafting some kelp rolls here. They have to be sliced, so they get fed into a slicer over here. Oh, that's what happened. Oh no, there it goes. Slicer. Cutting board. And they're fed onto the network here. Yeah. Belt. It's one of my more complicated machines the factory is tonight to date because of all the different pieces of equipment. But it's getting very easy to build these things um, with the computers. Um, I wonder if I should go, let's have, let's have a look. Well, we'll, ha we'll have a look at the command computers. Um, a lot of debugging because it's quite nasty. Um, while it's true, so we're gonna infinite loop. Get the infantry details for the items um, on the belt in front of it. Because when you connect the modem, it also connects to the belt. And the computer can connect to the belt. But um, in this case, I'm not doing that. Um, because you only, you only get the items when you connect as an inventory with the modem. You only get the items on that one piece of belt. But we need the whole... We, well, it, it, we need to know about the whole belt as well because we need to control whether or not uh, we're going to allow things to go on based on the number of items on the belt. And this is the only way to tell. Anyway, so, and we also need to tag them to say that they've been around the block. Should be checked again. So this gets information if there's an item in the at that index, so we start at index zero. If there's an item in that index, or if there's not, it says found no. So we 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 come to the end. There's no more items. Um, otherwise, we tell the item it should be checked. Modify it. A bit tricky. And then um, go to the next one. So that, that will try each item that it finds. Oh, and then they should be checked. And okay. If there was an item found, then... Oh, and two, if there was two items found, or at least, then we say... Um, that we don't want... We're using a not, so we don't... Um, don't want items to go on anymore. Otherwise, we do. We do want items to go on, and we sleep for half a second. Um... Setting the redstone to false um, causes the knot to be true, causing the clutch to be on. So it's negated again after it comes out of here. Um, to oh, twice because the clutch operates a bit strangely with the redstone to say it's off when it's on. Um, but that's pretty standard. So uh, I'll get this back running. Otherwise, uh, sushi won't be expiring anymore because it won't know that it needs to be checked. Um, let's have a look at this guy. 
Okay, so this one is really a bit more complicated. Um, it's doing the same thing, checking all the items it finds. But in this case, it's also checking the tags of them. And if if it's found no tag, that's the first, then, um, then we don't worry about it. It's got to be tagged to so say that we need to check it. Um, otherwise, we find out how many, t uh, find out the value of the flag to make sure we don't check the same item multiple times. We're going to turn that flag off once we've checked it. So that we find the little value of the tag from the string, the result from the command. And um, if it's saying, yes, we need to check it, then we find out how many ticks. And if it hasn't been checked before, then um, it's the first tick, rah, rah, rah. Um, and we determine what the next tick is going to be based on the current value of it. And then um, if it's been around another times, so we're going to cull it. So we insert it into a cull table. We don't do that right away. We insert it into a table to be checked later on. Um, otherwise, we just update the number of times it's been around and also to say that we've checked it. By modifying the tags. Okay, then we come down to the cull. If we've got items to cull, then we go backwards through the list. Of course, because we're deleting and we're removing the item from the belt by deleting it from its data. Whole thing, bang. Anyway, and there we have it. <sighs> that one was a complicated one. Um... Yes, so that is all, I think. Yeah, I've covered everything. Um, yes, so thanks for watching.